Hello, guys. Good afternoon. Happy Tuesday. Hello, Lisette, Monse, or Elise. Welcome. You want to test your microphone out? Hi, Wayne. Hello, Stacy. Good afternoon. Marifer, hello. Uh, I want to get right into it, guys. We've got, um, you know, I was looking at your paragraphs from yesterday, and I asked you guys to include citations and references. And um, I didn't realize until this morning that you have not talked about citations and references. So what I want to do today is uh, talk about that. I want to use our example from yesterday, your paragraphs from yesterday, and I want to discuss what citations are, what uh, references are, what the differences and are, and what the importance is when writing especially academic papers. All right? So when you're asked to write academic papers in the BA, it's important that you know uh, that you know enough about APA in order to avoid plagiarism. We'll talk more about that here in a few minutes. Okay, so I'd like to use yesterday's example as perhaps maybe this is your introductory into uh, APA and writing and including citations. Maybe you did some of this in high school, but we're going to get, um, we're going to introduce these two. We're going to use this assignment to become a little bit more familiar with cite citing other outside sources and how to include those in the references. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and uh, let's go into, uh, let's see, we're going to go into our file from yesterday. <clears throat> Now, before we get into uh, the uh, specifics of citations and references, just a reminder, make sure that after you've made the changes to your paragraph that you remove all comments. Okay, so please remove all comments. So at the end, we basically have no comments along the right-hand side of the document. Okay, so if you haven't done so already, please go in and make those changes after you've made changes to your paragraph. Now this morning we we're talking about the um, the differences between citations and references, and I'm going to give out a lot of information today. So uh, today's recording, as well as uh, the class from this morning, both are being recorded or have been recorded, and so you'll be able to to look at the recordings if you need to go back and get more detail. But I want to give you enough information here to look at what you've completed make a few more changes so that our finished document looks more like uh, more like an academic uh, text. All right, so so let's let's start first by looking at each of your paragraphs. When you look at each of your sentences, and this what we talk about today is going to apply for any type of body paragraph, you know, um, it, it's not going to apply too much to the conclusion paragraph if you're writing an essay. It might apply to your introduction paragraph, but certainly in your body paragraphs, you want to take this into consideration when you're thinking about citations and references. Take a look at your paragraph and determine from each sentence, is it your idea, is it your main idea, or is it an original idea versus... Is it an idea that comes from an outside source? Every sentence that you write should be one or the other. It should be either your original idea or it should come from an outside source. It should be an idea or information that comes from an outside source. You should never include both your original idea and an idea from the outside in the same sentence. Okay, so... First of all, make that distinction. Take take a look at your paragraph and say, okay, this sentence is my idea, this sentence is not, this sentence it is, my own idea, and so on. When you come across a sentence in your paragraph, in your body paragraph, 
that is not your original idea, right? And it's also not common knowledge, right? So if I say, you know, the world is round, well, that's not my original idea. I didn't come up with that idea. It's actually somebody else's idea, but it's common knowledge. Then I wouldn't have to cite that information, right? If you're recalling a news story, right, and you're just recalling the facts that you've heard about that story, right, and you're not quoting anybody directly, you're just recalling the story, the events based on your understanding, what you've heard about that story, you don't need to cite it because it's given that that's common knowledge. Once it's in the news, it's common knowledge typically, right? But of course, if you're quoting very specific data like percentages and you know, you're you're getting a lot of statistics and, and you're using really detailed information, then you're going to need to cite that information because it's probably not common knowledge. Now, when you look at your sentences and you've determined that some sentences are coming from an outside source and you've determined that you need to include a citation, then we look at basically two types or two ways that we can cite someone else's information. Now, remember that a cite, it's also called an in-text citation. A citation is going to occur within the text. That's why they call it an in-text citation. It's going to be found within the body paragraph. So here you basically have two types. You have what's called a parenthetical citation, and you have what's called a narrative citation. Now, the first Example, the first type of citation, the parenthetical citation, is the one that I recommend that most students do. From prope to eighth semester, 90% of the time, I'm going to suggest that everyone follow or use the parenthetical citation. Now, the parenthetical citation, parenthetical comes from the word parentheses. So think of a parenthetical citation as basically a citation that it all the whole citation is within parentheses. So let's look at an example here. If you're if you can see my screen, I've highlighted two examples. One is a direct quote, the second is a paraphrase. It doesn't matter well, it, I guess it does matter. There's a slight difference between the two. Let's look at the differences. So the direct quote, notice I have in, uh, within uh, quotation marks, blah, blah, blah. Now, blah, 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 this is information coming from someone else, and I'm quoting uh, Gertz, Gertz in this case. I'm quoting this person word for word, right? So I have each word exactly the way it was stated in the original source, within quotation marks. Notice then I have a space after the quotation, the, the second quotation mark, and then I have in parentheses the author's last name only, followed by a comma, then the year, 2018, and because it's a direct quote, we're also going to include the, a page number. Let's assume that this source came, came from like a book, an article, some physical uh, resource, something that you can hold in your hands and it's it's got pages. We're going to indicate the page number where this blah, blah, blah came from. Now, one of the things that you need to pay close attention to here is the punctuation. Notice that the punctuation, the end of the sentence, occurs after the citation. In other words, the citation is within the sentence. Now, here's a common mistake many students will make. They'll put a period before the, the citation. This is an example of plagiarism. Just that one period. This is not plagiarism. This is plagiarism. Not plagiarism. This is plagiarism. Now, why? Because if I have a period before the citation, then you've excluded the citation from within the sentence that it, that it applies. So this blah, blah, blah within the quotation marks, guess what? It has no citation. 
And if you have, let's say, a sentence that comes after, right? So I've got blah, 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 blah. I've got that in quotation marks. And then afterwards, I've got this gibberish right here. And that's my next sentence. Guess what? We don't know, the reader doesn't know, if this citation, does it apply to blah, blah, blah? Or does it apply to this gibberish that comes later? We don't know. Because it's in no man's land, as they say. It's in no man's land. There's, it's nowhere. There's nothing here because we've put a period before and we have a period after. All right, so one of these, uh, one of the small details here to think about when you're using citations is to always make sure, especially parenthetical citations, make sure that the citation is within the sentence. In other words, make sure that the period occurs after the citation so that when we read this, I just took away the period here before, we know very, uh, it's very clear and that this citation applies to blah, 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 and not this gibberish that comes after. Now, the second example here is exactly the same idea. The only difference is it's a paraphrase. And most of the time, I suggest to students to paraphrase instead of direct quote. We don't want to include more than 15% of our total text as a direct quote. Okay, so if you're going to use direct quotes, it's only for those special case, uh, occasions where somebody says something very, very unique, or mo maybe they coined a phrase, maybe they created a word or phrase that now is part of the lexicon that everybody's using, right? In those cases, it's perfectly fine to direct quote. But I would say 90% of the time, it's better if you put it in your own words. You, uh, you express the idea, but in your own words, and you'll find that it actually becomes easier to connect ideas. It actually becomes more difficult to connect and write more cohesively when we have too many direct quotes and we focus too much on the authors, which we'll talk about right now. So this is an example of parenthetical uh, uh, citations where the citation is within the, within the parentheses. Now the second type called narrative citations, this is where we focus on the author. So here in this case, we've got a couple of examples here. You could state, according to Gertz, 2018. Now here's your citation. The citation is actually here, which only includes the year, comma, and then direct quote. We've got blah, blah, blah. And afterwards, we conclude with another parentheses, P.5. This is page five. So this is where you would find the direct quote. Now, if you are going to um, write this another way, you could actually say Gertz stated that, right? And now you're paraphrasing. Okay, so they're very similar, right? But one, you're paraphrasing, one, you're direct quoting the person, the, the author. Remember that when you're paraphrasing, it's not required to include the page number. Now, I should say one more thing about the page number. If you are quoting a website and there's no page number, right? Because typically there are no pages, it's just paragraphs. Then you want to, instead of putting P period, you can write, you can abbreviate paragraph, P-A-R-A. P-A-R-A -A period, and then the number of the paragraph where you find the direct quote. Again, it's not necessary to include the page number when you're paraphrasing. Okay, in the manual, they actually say it's optional. I usually uh, just uh, not require it if uh, you're paraphrasing. And I would, again, uh, encourage most students to paraphrase and to follow the parenthetical citations for the most part, like this type right here where you've got the information in a sentence, 
and then you have the entire citation, you have the author's last name, and then the year. Now, let's say that you have two authors. Well, then it'll look something like this. You could say Gertz and Smith, right? If you have more than two, you could have Smith, Wallace, and Stewart, or whatever. Okay, so you just list them out, being careful with the commas, right? Remember that we need the Oxford comma or the serial comma right before the connector and when we have a series, three or more. So same rules apply for when you're listing out authors. All right, so these are citations. Remember, these are in-text citations that appear within the paragraphs. Now, don't make the mistake. Remember that the... The citations need to occur in within the sentence. So don't make the mistake of including a citation at the very end of the paragraph and thinking, okay, este aplica todo lo demás, o, o aplica en algo ahí en el párrafo. We don't know. We don't know where it goes if you stick it at the end of the paragraph and think, okay, it applies to something, someplace, or does it apply to the whole paragraph? We don't want that either, right? Because... We don't want to have too many citations. Remember that citations are there to support your original idea. That's why we have it. Okay, so we don't want to have too many citations. But we want, we want to have enough to say, okay, I have some ideas and I have some evidence to support those ideas. All right, so these are citations. Now, in the references for this assignment. Let me go all the way down to the bottom of the document. Yesterday I created a section at the very bottom of the page, at the very bottom of the document, that's called references. So when you guys write an academic essay and you're including your references, you need to include a page break at the very end to create a new page and at the very top it should say references. This is called a level one heading. Now, below the references in our uh, in this particular assignment, I would like all of your references to be listed underneath this heading, references. And we're going to organize our references alphabetically. A becomes comes before B, B comes before C, according to, for the most part, the author's last name. But let's take a look at some examples of some references. Now, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. And so I can see myself. This is the seventh edition of the APA publication manual. You can see there's, you know, there's several pages going on here, right? There's, I don't know, 400 some odd pages, 430 pages, okay? A lot of detail. One of the best chapters in this book is a list of reference examples. This is chapter 10. Let's see if I can hold that up. Chapter 10. And this is really good because, and let me show you the first example. It's got each example of each reference type numbered. So notice here, this is number one. There's number two. It's got some examples of both references and citations. Example number three. Take a wild guess. Take a wild guess how many examples of different references do you think there are? Now, again, each one of these is listed here. They're slightly different, right? They're not the same. They're listed here, and they're slightly different in their requirements. Take a wild guess how many examples of references there are. Well, I'll tell you. 114, this is the last one right here, 114 examples, 114 examples listed where they have example of the reference and the citation. And each one of them is slightly different. Amazing, right? 114 examples. Now, the good part about this is for our purposes, our being the BA, so any uh, most of the academic essays that you're asked to write, 
you're only going to need to be concerned with probably at the most most uh, probably five to six types of references for the most part. Now there are going to be some odd ones out there perhaps that you need, but you're really only going to need to become really familiar with, I would say four or five. And when you really get into academic, like uh, academic writing and you're using only articles, you're not using books, you're not using websites, only articles. You're really only, you're really only going to be needing about three different references that you need. Okay. So that's the good part. You don't need to memorize all these, right? You don't need to even memorize any of them. But what you need to do is be able to find good examples. When I say good examples, accurate examples of these different references so that you can use those as an example, as a guide, whenever you're writing your own. Now, what I've done in Microsoft Teams is I've included a few examples because I know many of you are including a video, maybe a TED talk, maybe a, uh, a blog or a news organization, like a website from a news organization online. So what I've uploaded here, these are examples of basically taking from the, the publication manual where you can use this as a guide to see how you can fit yours and, and, and format your references depending on the type of reference it is. All right, so today I'm, I'm uh, hoping that when we finish our discussion, we'll have some time to clarify if anyone needs to uh, check their type of reference. If it's something that we haven't talked about, you know, we can take a look at uh, how to format it. But notice that just taking this example, We've got an author, we've got a date. In this case, we have the, the name of the site, the, the page itself, like the article. Then we have the Washington Post, which is the, the name of the news organization, and then the link, the URL. Notice that in all of the different cases, all of the different examples, we have some text that's normal, we have some text that is italicized. So it's a matter of really knowing what to italicize, what to capitalize. Notice that the titles, only the first words are capitalized. And that's pretty much across the board. You know, it's a, it, this is going to apply to just about any type of uh, reference. So let's take a look at the TED Talk. Again, we have some text that's italicized, some that is not. We have examples of both the parenthetical as well as the narrative. Now, in this particular example, you may ask, well, what's, what's the deal with the semicolon? If you have two sources that support the same idea, then you can separate those two sources with a semicolon. So in both cases, in this case, you have the author's last name and then the year. With the, the example of the TED Talk here, we don't, we have uh, the, the actual name of the organization, TED, and that's coming first. And then we have uh, the name of the person who's speaking. So there's basically two ways to, to do that. All right, so... Let's go back to, ben, yes. Can you go back to the newspaper's uh, example? And what is the word that is italicized? The Washington Post only, or there are yes. more words? Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe it's hard to see here, but uh, the Washington Post is what's italicized. Um, here in the second example, the New York Times is italicized. And uh, the blog post oh, okay. down here, uh -huh. the blog post down here, uh, Cy Ed is italicized only. Okay, so you kind of see a pattern here. You see after the date in all three examples, you've got the name of the either the pretty much the article, right? Um, and then after that, you have the organization typically, right? So New York Times, the Washington Post, these are all news organizations science ed, and so on. 
and these are usually what's italicized in these examples. But it's different for, for each example. Okay. Ben. Yes. I have a question about the how to reference the TED the TED talk. All right, let me oh, let me uh Okay, what's your question? Well, in the parenthetical citation, uh, it's like the name of the person, then the year, and then comma, Ted, like uh, 2012. And my uh, question okay, so was, yeah, this is this might be confusing. What they're doing here in this example, because there are two references, they're just showing you uh, both together. But in the real world, you know, usually, you know, where you'll only have one, well, I won't say you usually, but uh, in your case, you only use one in the citation, one source, unless the second source is supporting the same idea. All right, so in your case, you're probably only going to need one citation that supports the one idea that you're talking about in your sentence. All right, so this example here is basically saying that if you're going to write out a sentence, some idea, and you're going to write it like this, you're saying that both of these sources are saying the same thing. They're saying what you're saying in the, the sentence. Does, does that make sense? Okay, yeah. So then in my example, I just put like the name of the person and the year without the other uh, thing, right? It's just that I got confused because I thought that it was giving the example of just the first reference and I didn't understand what 2012 was standing for. But now that you explain, I, I actually got it, so. Okay, all right. So, yeah, I mean, it looks like Stevenson. Is that the one you're referring to? Yes. All right, now, one of the questions I have here in your case, uh, uh, Monse, is to, um, I would encourage you to uh, paraphrase. Okay. Don't feel like you have to mention, as Bryson Stevenson said, right? Just take this idea where you say, we cannot be involved in human beings, da, da, da. take that idea and just put it into your own words, but within this sentence. So in your case, the sentence begins with inequality as led, right? Mm -hmm. And it goes from there all the way to here. So I want you to look at this whole sentence. And I want you to go back to the idea that uh, uh, Steverson, I should say, Steverson uh, says, and develop this entire sentence around the idea that he is communicating, but put it in your own words. And then you end the sentence just like you have here, right? And you don't need quotation marks because you're using, you're putting it in your own words. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, so this is an example where here, like we want it to be for the reader super clear if 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 all of this is uh, Steverson or is this part yours and the other parts coming from him or but we there shouldn't be any uh, confusion and again I think in most cases uh, it's a good exercise to try to paraphrase because that that's also you know I think good for us to try to put into our own words someone else's idea when you guys are writing someone else's idea so that you don't um, so that it, you don't use exactly the same words, try to not write what you just read. Like read it, think about it, understand it, and then set it aside for you know a few minutes or half an hour or so, then come back and then write out the idea. And then that way you're less likely to even accidentally write a few of the exactly the same phrases. Okay. Um, do you just have the one, won't say the one citation? I'm sorry, what? 
Do you just have uh, the one citation? Uh, yeah, I'm looking for the other one. All right. Another thing, too, that I'll mention, guys, with the location of your citations, they should typically be more towards the, the beginning of the, the, of the paragraph. Like, they're not going to be the first sentence because the first sentence is going to be your topic sentence. But usually the second sentence, you should begin with your first citation, your first evidence. And then you can decide if you want to put, if you want to lump all of your citations together at the beginning of the paragraph, or if you want to present a little bit of evidence and then comment, and then another piece of evidence with a citation and then comment on that. You know, there's a lot of options at that point, but we don't want to leave all of the evidence until the end of the paragraph because we always want to comment. We want to analyze. We want to synthesize. We want to compare and contrast. We want to tie the evidence back to the main idea. All right, so let's go down. Let me uh, talk just a little bit more about the references, and then we'll look at some more examples if you guys need examples for, um, for your own particular cases. So let's look at the references now. So um, here we have one example, and I actually have problems formatting it in working on Word Online. So I'm going to open up a separate document. All right, so here I have copy and pasted my reference. Now, in when you guys are working in Microsoft Word, many times you're going to be asked to write an academic essay using Microsoft Word. We have to actually change the indentation. It's actually the opposite of our, our uh, indentations that we typically use in our paragraphs. Although I'm not asking for indentations for this assignment, the references are going to be like this. The first line all the way to the left, and then all subsequent lines after the first line is going to have a 0.5 inch indentation, a half inch indentation. The easiest way to do that is to select all of your references and use these slider bars up here in the ruler. Because once you've done that, you do it one time. Let's say you want to write out your next your next reference. I'm going to hit tw uh, enter twice so that we create a double space. Then I'm off to the races. I've got my next reference. Notice that it automatically formats as I as I need to. Then next, and then I'm off again. Okay, so this is what your reference list should look like. The indentations. Okay, so just keep a mental note about that when you are writing your essays. Okay, the stuff that I'm talking about here today, this is not just my weird requirements and just me being mean and all of that. This is actually what all teachers are going to expect that you know and be able to do anytime when you get into the BA when you're asked to write an academic essay. Okay, this is a standard procedure. And the, the very top line, the very first line of your references is going to be a level one heading called, guess what, references. So we're going to center it to the page. We're going to put it in bold. We're going to have double space. We're going to select all of the text. We're going to hit lines. Oops, don't want to do that. Okay. So it's going to look something like this. All right, so this is what the format should look like. It's very important that we follow the formatting so that the so that the uh, essay looks uniform, that there's some consistency right in how you write the essay. And this again, this is coming from uh, the APA publication manual. All right, so remember finally, two guys, the references. Make sure they're, they're uh, alphabetized. A comes before B, B comes before C, and make sure that you're uh, listing the author's name first. Like this is a good example, Ramos, comma, 
and then the first initial and so on. Now, some of you have, um, you have sources in Spanish. In Microsoft Teams, I uploaded a presentation. And let me see if I can open that up. Oops, not that. Mm, let's see, where is it? Well, let's uh, let's open it up here directly. Okay, there's a. I have a presentation here that you might want to save. Let me go ahead and share this again. I put it in here somewhere. Okay, so this is a, a link to a presentation that I'm, I keep out there. It's been it's been published for a long time now, but I keep this up to date as changes are made to the publication manual. Uh, this has been uh, up to date. And so here, if you go into chapter 10, you'll find some examples. Now, I don't have all 114 examples, but I usually include the examples that are the most common in in most of the essays that you're going to be asked to write. I don't know why I can't select it. Let's try it again. There it is. So here we have certain examples, and when you get into writing academic uh, articles or you know uh, essays, you're going to need to rely more on journals. And so the very first three examples are the probably the most common type of. Uh, references that you're going to be asked to write. But I've also included some that are in another language. And so I would use this example. Those of you who have sources from uh, that are in, in, in Spanish, that you basically are going to list out all the authors. You're going to list out the title or the name of the site or the article in Spanish. And then in brackets, you're going to translate it to English. So you need to write it out in English. And then basically everything else is going to be in Spanish based on, you know, the name of the uh, the news site or the name of the the web page or the website. Okay, so basically uh, the only thing you'll need to translate will be the title of the uh, of the either web page or the article. Okay, so if you want to just take a note of this, this example is found in the presentation. I would save the link, put it in your favorites someplace so that you can refer to it later, maybe next semester when you're writing your first essay in HSA. And uh, you might find this presentation useful. All right, so what else? I mean, there's a lot of details here. I don't want to get too much in the weeds. I want to give enough time for answering any questions that you guys have and also for you to continue making your final changes, uh, making sure that you have citations in your paragraph, at least one, and make sure that for every citation you have a reference, for every reference you have a citation. Right? Make sure that you don't have a reference with no citation and vice versa. And, uh, you know, again, I would make sure that the citations are within the paragraph. Don't don't begin your paragraph with the citation and uh, don't end your paragraph with the citation. All right. Any questions, guys, about APA, about citations, about citing outside sources? I have a question, Ben. Uh, well, yes, my, go ahead. My doesn't have a, an author, so what should I put there? All right. Uh, can you include the link in the chat so I can take a look? Thank you. Sure.
Ben, while Oscar is doing that, I have another question. Yeah. So we do need a citation when we are paraphrasing? Yes, absolutely, yes. Anytime you anytime you're writing about someone or using someone else's idea, whether you're paraphrasing or direct quoting, we need a citation. But do we need to like start the sentences the sentence like according to someone and then our sentence like paraphrase it? Or it doesn't matter. Okay, so let me let me go back. To okay, so remember these examples at the top here. Okay, we talked about two types. We talked about parenthetical citations, and we talked about narrative citations. I would suggest that everyone use parenthetical citations. So a parenthetical citation means that all of the information that relates to the citation is going to be within the parentheses. So basically the author's last name and the year. So before the citation, this is the idea only. So you're just writing, well, this is a direct quote. I should use this example. You paraphrase the person's idea Right, depending on, on what you said in the prior sentence, depending on what you're going to say in the next sentence, you just develop and put that idea into your own words without mentioning the the uh, author. And then you you finish the sentence with a citation with the author's last name and the year. And then you have a period at the end. So, so we I don't we don't mm -hmm. need quotation marks, right? Only when we are like uh, writing word by word what the author said, right? Yeah, I would I would suggest for everyone to paraphrase. Okay, so no direct quotes. If you really, really, really want a direct quote, then let's talk about it and we'll see. I'll we'll discuss it. All right, because. I'd rather you paraphrase the ideas, especially for this assignment. When you guys write an essay, you you should, in general, generally speaking, you should paraphrase more than direct quote, right? Because we should never have more than 15, that's one five, 15% 15 of your text as a direct quote, all right? We don't want to direct quote too much. So I would paraphrase, um, you know, in, in this case. So it basically would look like this example that I've highlighted uh, right here. All right, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, Oscar, in this example, all right, let's look at, let's go back to Teams and let's look at This example. Can you see this on my screen, Oscar? Uh, yes, I do. All right. So here we've got basically two examples. Now, the difference here is that we don't have an author. All right. So we're going to do a variation of, of this. And I was actually looking this up this morning because somebody else asked me exactly the same question. And... <clears throat> and I think I remember one of the classes went a long time ago when we were actually going, uh, seeing each other face to face. Um, there was one or two days where I think you guys were taking pictures of some examples of citations. And I think this is one of those cases. Um, I'm looking here. And here, here's how I would write this up. I would begin with the name of the organization. All right, so the name of the news organization. All right, El Gerardo. All right, so you're going to begin with that. And then you're going to have the date. So in parentheses, I would put 2019, comma, space, 
and then I would put the month first, May 28th, and then close the parentheses, followed by period. Then the title of the article. So you're going to write it out in Spanish and then in brackets, translate it to English. And then put a period after the bracket, after you've translated it, and then the URL. Copy and paste the URL here at the top. And then the text, um, and then I would italicize the, uh, the title of the article. I'm going to go, I'm going to take a picture of this. This is uh, number 111. And I'm going to upload this to Microsoft Teams so that you guys can also take a look at this. Um, it's it's not going to be exactly the same, but it 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 will be very similar to the example in 111. Okay, does that make sense, Oscar? Yes. So that that's the part in the reference. Uh, in the reference space. But what about the Within my paragraph. Yeah, the, t the citation you're just going to put first El Gerardo and then comma and then 2019. So you're going to alphabetize under E, right? So that's how it's going to be listed in the references. So in the citation, just write out El Gerardo comma 2019. Okay, and instead of uh, idolizing the the name of the newspaper, I have to do that to the name of the article. Uh, can you say that again? Well, do I have to italize? Italicize? Italicize, sorry. Italicize the, um, the name of the newspaper or the name of the article or both. The no, just the name of the, uh, just the title of the article only. Okay. 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 I'm going to upload guys this, um, this image. If anyone else is in the same situation, uh, you might take a look at, at this example. Let's see if it shows up here. Okay, so basically, Oscar, what I did is I took this example here of the World Health Organization. And so, Again, it's going to be the name of the, the newspaper. And then here it just says March, but I would write out the, the month and the day. So the year first, comma, then the month and the day, then the name of the uh, article. But, be, but because the article is in Spanish, write it out in Spanish first and italicize it. Then in brackets, in brackets, then put it in English. Okay, and then the URL. Okay, anybody else have questions about their particular type of reference? I know today was a lot of information, and uh, that's why I wanted to make sure I get uh, both sessions this morning and also your session uh, recorded. I, I'm going to make this available, of course, like all the sessions. Um, but really try to uh, save this information um, for later because you're definitely going to be 
thinking a lot more about this uh, throughout the entire BA, right? As you write your academic articles, and it may not even be for a writing class, but any any in any class that asks for an academic essay, make sure that you're uh, paying very close attention to some of the things that we've talked about here today. How to cite, being careful with punctuation, making sure that the reference is, you're following the format for that particular type of reference. And in most cases, you can just uh, do a search online. Like this morning, I was I was looking for, let's say, no. Let's see, citation. No author, book, APA. And then make sure you always put seventh, seventh edition, because since this book is brand new, it's less than six months old. Um, you know, there have been changes to the different editions. So you can see here, web page. Well, this is a web page, no author or a book. Actually, a book's not a good example. A website is a better example. But here, notice that right here, you've got the in-text in citation. You have the example for paraphrase. You have an example for a direct quote. And you have an example for the reference. So a lot of times, just by doing a, a filtered search, you can find also examples of what you're looking for. But do be, pay close attention that you're looking at the seventh edition, not the sixth, to ensure that you're following the, the latest changes in some of the rules and how, how to list references and citations. All right, guys, I think we'll stop there. Uh, any final questions for today? Ben, does that example that you just showed uh, applies to this? For example, I just found another website because I'm going to paraphrase something that I found, and it's BBC News. So they didn't include it like the author of the article. So do I have to use that one that you just showed, like a website or web page? I don't remember, without an author? Yeah, I would uh, follow the same advice that I gave Oscar in that case. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. All right, guys, I think we'll go ahead and stop there. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you want me to look at something, uh, shoot me an email or a, a, a chat mail, I should say, uh, or a message, and I'll take a look at it. And uh, try to finish this up now for, for tomorrow. Tomorrow we we'll definitely will get into the next topic. But I wanted to take today to, um, to speak with you guys about APA to give you a little bit of exposure, kind of an introduction to uh, citing and referencing. And um, again, tomorrow we'll pick up with the next topic. All right, thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.